Welcome back to the DCC Museum. I have next to me the Philips DCC850. After multiple delays of the DCC technology's release, Philips decided at the end of 1991 to share their existing prototype with various important magazines, like this one. The prototype was based off one of their current cassette players and merely meant for advertisement and review. Of the 100 players known to be made, we believe only three are in existence today. The DCC Museum has recently obtained one of these three, an incredible find. Out of all the players I have seen so far, this is definitely my favorite, because of its rare appearance, the glass door. It's only disappointing that this was never released to the public in its physical state. Today I will be showing you how it operates and even share a peek under its silver lining. In 1991, there were 2.6 billion empty and pre-recorded cassette sales, and with the arrival of competing technologies like the mini-disc, DAT and CD, Philips, the inventor of the analog audio cassette, developed the digital compact cassette, or DCC. Philips tried to hold on to that cassette market by developing a player that would still play regular analog cassettes, but also play and record the DCC tapes. With its pass coding that turned out to be a founding father for the later to be released MP3, it was very innovative at the time. Since the head had to be able to handle the analog and digital formats, it was a true masterpiece, allowing 20 tracks. The DCC850 was auto reverse and had a glass door, similar to the traditional analog cassette players. Philips decided to stray away from this design and most players ended up with a tray based system. The new DCC tapes had a much cooler design with the artwork on the cassette itself that was not visible in the tray-based systems while playing. Most of the features released later in 1992 are already available on this prototype, including the marker segment where you can add and delete a marker, which is basically the track number. There is also an add reverse marker to reverse the tape at a specific point. Missing features were the next marker, allowing fast forwarding the tape to start at the other side and the order marker, inserting the markers automatically. They were added a few months later. There is also only one recording button, while on the later units the append recording was introduced, allowing you to quickly find the last recording on a tape. Features that did not make the release later in 1992, but are on this unit, are the blank search that came from the analog technology and left and right microphone inputs. Like many prototypes, this unit had its quirks and failures. The play button, later used on the Marantz players DD82 and 92, does not change the side of direction, but switches to the next track and the useless possibility of activating Dolby when using the digital DCC. On the back side we noticed something interesting. We believe that this unit was developed even further as a prototype after its review from the various magazines. The reason is this card connector on the back shown here. It allowed PAL video output based on the data Philips was able to put on the 9th track of their DCC tape. This data contained artist track and album information, but could also replicate lyrics and some graphics. To connect a DCC player to your television, you would have needed a DCC ITTS video box that we have already reviewed in a different video. This card connector led us to believe that they did have serious plans to integrate this part in future players as well. ITTS lyrics and graphics were only released on very few pre-recorded DCC tapes. The inside of the units consists with what we know of prototypes. Most of the integrated circuits are placed on feet for easy removal, various extra cables and manual numbering. Shown here is the internal ITTS print connected to SCART that we also found in the earlier mentioned separate video box. Unfortunately, this internal print is no longer working. When connecting the DCC850 up to a PAL TV, no signal was produced. The AD converter used is the SI Cassé, also used in that technology. Philips kept using this AK5326 in its later released models as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching our review of the very first DCC player. Next to the repair and restoration video, we will also do one about each player currently in the museum. 
See you next time.